He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all unto me. And right now, we need to be drawn unto the Lord. The word also says that if you draw nigh unto him, he'll draw nigh unto you. Oh, God, we're grateful for that promise this morning. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our Father who art in heaven, glory, majesty, and honor be unto you. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. For the earth is the Lord. And the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. The earth is full of the Lord's glory. So God, we're grateful right now that we're in your presence. For it tells us that there is fullness of joy in your presence. Our hearts have been made glad for this is the day that you have made. And you are allowing us to participate in it. God, we're grateful for we know it's nothing so good, nothing so great that we've done, but it is your grace and your mercy. So we come, God, in a most humble and sincere state right now, asking that you please forgive us of our sins. Wash us thoroughly from all of our unrighteousness, whether it be in word, thought, or deed. Perhaps we've done something even this early, God, that you're not pleased with. And we've come this morning that we might exalt you. We've come this morning that we might praise, honor, and give glory to you. We've come that we might have an experience with you. And we don't want anything blocking it out, anything standing in the way. Don't want anything, God, to, to, to mess with our connection to you right now. So, God, we ask that you please create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit. For, God, we are determined to walk this street called straight. We're con we are committed, God, to love you with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our souls, and with all of our strength. God, we thank you for this awesome this amazing, this incredible day that you've given us. Thank you for all of those who have joined us in this corporate worship experience. Because God, you've been so good to us this week. Oh, you've answered prayers this week, God. You've made ways out of no ways this week, God. You've reminded us that you would not leave us, nor would you forsake us. In our individual lives, God, we have reasons to bless your name. So, God, today, corporately, we come in a unified fashion to say, thank God for all that you've done. You've done, God. Thank you for all that you've done, God. Oh, God. Young man and a child were missing, but God, yeah. you showed up right on time. Yeah. Found them safe, God. Yeah. Then there was a serious car wreck, God, but God, we just came straight yeah. and scratches. Yeah. Oh, God, you're so good. Yeah. Somebody going through bereavement right now, but God, they're strengthened yeah. in the fact that you're with them, God. Oh, God, blessings are on top of blessings. And we thank you this morning. For this is your doing, God. And everything that you allow us to experience, it is to make us bolder. It is to make us better. It is to make us more helpful. Oh, God, we thank you. God, we just can't praise you enough. Hallelujah. But we just want you to know that, God, we thank you. Not anything that we need to ask you for, but we just say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for all that you're doing right now, God. Oh, bless the Lord, all our souls, and everything that is 
within us. We bless your holy name. Oh God, thank you for allowing us to assemble, whether we're in person, in the parking lot, by way of social media, you allowed us to come together one more time. There are those who are on the way. We ask your blessings upon them. Those who desire to be here but cannot be, we ask your blessings right now, God. We've got some members who aren't feeling well this morning, God, but in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your healing power, God. God asks you to, to just continue to abide with us in this worship experience so that everything that we say and everything that we do may be found pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We invoke your presence right now, God, knowing that you're already here. Because I counted two, I counted three, I counted more. God, we're in an overflow right now. And we thank you for being present and in charge. Have your way. We submit and surrender everything that we have planned to do. We submit that to you, God, that your will might be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we count it done and we count you present and active. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lead me to count 228. Let me like Mary through the 
don't ever want to forget Calvary, amen? amen. Don't ever want to forget what he went through for us. Amen. To God be the glory. Again, we say good morning to all of you. Welcome to the house of the Lord on this first Sunday in February. Yes. The love month. Amen. Yes. Black history month. <laughs> <laughs> we are so grateful for all of you being here. Grateful that God has spared our lives one more day. We're going to ask Sister Nichols if she'll please come with our morning announcements. Uh, please give an ear to her. Good morning. Good morning. These are our morning announcements. Our vision, mission, and purpose here at IMMBC is to prepare souls for Christ and for his kingdom citizenship, to labor for Christ through teaching, preaching, studying, and living the word of God, and to create an atmosphere in our church to encourage those in attendance to have an experience with the Lord. We are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. 2021 financial statements are available upon request. Please reach out to Sister Delita Clifton in person, on Facebook, by email. That's D-A-L-I-D-A-P at bellsouth.net or text her at 704-281-2277. It is time again to update contact information. Please send your updated name, phone number, and address, birthday and anniversary to Nicosia Washington via text at 704-451-1405. Choir rehearsal will be held Mondays at 6.30 p.m. here at our Susan Drive location. Bible study is Wednesdays at 12.30 at the Susan Drive location as well. The men's and media ministries will be accepting food donations for the annual IMMBC food drive. And we do have birthdays and anniversary for the week of February the 6th through February the 12th. Happy birthday goes out to Reverend Kevin Nichols, February the 12th. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you. <laughs> and then we have happy anniversary to Brother Johnny and Sister Taisha Stowe, February the 7th. Father, February is the second month of the year. In February, double my blessings. I need it double, double, oh Lord, my God. You can view all recorded services on our YouTube channel, IMMBC Worship Channel. You can give electronically through our cash app, that's dollar sign IMMBC. Please make sure you add your name and the ministry you are giving to. Tithes, General Offering, Building Fund, 12 Tribes, Children's, Chinese Auction, and Fish Fry. And we have on our prayer list, Mother Annie Lincoln family, Sister Katie Stewart and family, Sister Dorothy P. Love and family, Sister Latrell Johnson and family, Sister Brenda Phillips and family, Brother Reggie and Sister Trina Smith and family, Rosa Espinosa and family, Sister Marie Frazier, Brother Darnell Woods, Sister Brenda Truesdale, Sister Tia Jones, Sister Carol Jones, Brother Byron Truesdale, Brother Mike and Sister Melissa Peterson, Brother Artie Jones, Sister Cinderella Dooley, Brother Diamond Hall, Brother Robert Livingston, Sister Ruby Black, Brother Ronald Giles, and the Mentor family. All members who are working, working away and absent from our service, all the sick, shut-in, bereaved, and all the members of the armed forces. This is Black History Month. 
The celebration of Black History Month begins as Negro History Week, which was created in 1926 by Carter G. Woodson, a noted African-American historian, scholar, educator, and publisher. It became a month-long celebration in 1976. The month of February was chosen to coincide with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. First published in 1936, Negro Motorist Green Book was a comprehensive guide for black travelers about locations across America and eventually overseas that were either black owned or didn't engage in segregationist practice the guide was printed for 30 years. It stopped public publication in 1966, two years after the Civil Rights Act was passed. The oldest black female Greek letter organization, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, that's AKA, was founded at Howard University in 1908. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, that's Alpha, the first black male Greek letter organization was founded in 1906 at Cornell University. It's estimated that around 100,000 enslaved people escaped to the North Via in the Underground Railroad from 1810 to 1850. In July 1777, Vermont became the first colony to ban slavery. In 1738, a group of newly free, free men and women founded the town Gracia Real de Santa Teresa de Mos, Florida, just two miles away from St. Augustine. It's considered to be the first ever free black settlement in the U.S., but was abandoned following the, ye the Seven Years' War in 1763. This is your Black History Month. May we reflect on each and everything that we said today for Black History. That's history, y'all. Okay. Thank you, Media Ministry, for um, the information regarding Black, black History. Um, we know that we will be blessed to have more information all month. Oh, about to overlook that. Uh -huh. <laughs> there are those in our lives who are quite special. <laughs> and so would y'all please help us make them even more special. <laughs>
visitors, those who are not visitors, but you don't normally come every Sunday. It was good to see you. Glad to have my baby brother here today. Yeah. <laughs> Deacon Smith is going to come to receive our tithes and our offerings, and as he comes, uh, for those of you that are on the uh, Tuesday and Thursday night prayer uh, conference call, you will know this name, Sister Rosanna Cyrus. Uh, she is so blessed to be a part of us. She has sent us a donation for our church anniversary of $100. And for that, we tell her thank you. Amen. We asked God to increase our territory. We just didn't know how he was yeah. going to increase it. So we thank God for those who consider us friends and uh, this ministry work so in season to Our preoccupatory blessing. Oh, I've got our heavenly Father again. We come before you give me thanks for another special day. The first Sunday we've never seen before in a special year. 2022. Mm -hmm. Father God, we ask you to continue to bless the apple part of our family, bless the family that stepped out of the car, bless the ones that's watching from the father. We ask you to continue to bless this church as we continue to try to do the things that you allow us to do. We ask you, Father, up to bless this offering that you allowed us to take up and bless the folks that have the will to give. We ask you to continue with us throughout this week. We ask you in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
after the reading of um, scripture, Deacon Hobson will come with our morning prayer. After the prayer, the choir shall lead us into a hymn of praise, and then we will return with the word from the Lord. Amen. 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 First Corinthians eleven, verse twenty-three. For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. The word of God for the people of God. Bless be God. Deacon Hobson. Good evening, good morning, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank God because we're here this morning. There are a lot of people that didn't rise this morning, but dear God, we thank you for letting us rise. Dear God, just thank you for everything you've done for us, dear God. And dear God, let us help the people out there that need help, dear God. I looked at my cousin, she's been calling and calling. So I said, Lord, I got to take time out to talk to her. The mother and them don't talk to her. The sisters and aunts don't talk to her. But I got in touch with her father. She calls me and him. Can you imagine someone saying all day in a wheelchair? Well, she gets around great, though, and calling just want to talk. She don't have anyone to talk to. I said, Lord, since I'm beating my gums and rocks with mine, I could do, to do what does say the Lord. So sometimes you don't want to talk. But you better make time to talk. Because this young lady is out there needing help. And I said, Lord, maybe by our conversation, that'll help her. She'll sit there and ask me about a show. She's 45 years old. And I'm listening. He said, Aunt, uh, do you know my deputy dog? I said, Yes. So it mine's back in the cartoon days back in the day. So we have a good time talking about that and everything. But she also bring up about God. And that's the main thing. And we're getting to that part of it. And she just feels that much better off. And we thank God for it. Because God has been there for us. So we need to be there for someone else. We can tell them about God. But they get to see it coming out of us. Talk is talk. Doing is doing. So we got to do what we got to do. And I thank God for going through this and everything. Because I said, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for putting me in the path for this young lady. I hadn't seen her in years. But thank God for seeing her. Because that put a joy on her face and a smile and everything. And she said, Um, I appreciate you talking to me. One day she called me and said, Um, please don't stop talking to me. I said, Baby, I'm going to keep God in me and keep talking to you. I know how it is. But I didn't want to put that out there to y'all like that. But I said, Lord, I need to put it out because maybe y'all can help someone. Because that's what we are here for, to help each other. 
for it. This is my prayer in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
and I need to let somebody know what the devil meant for evil. Jesus was on this earth that we know about. We saw his life 
for three years. Remember? In those three years, he celebrated Passover every year because he was a Jew. But on this particular Passover, there was something different. This was something different on this particular Passover. Not only was it the last time that he would sit with his disciples at Passover, but on this particular Passover, you remember, this is the time that he washed their feet. Mm. Then a few hours later, we're told in the word that he was betrayed by Jews, arrested, denied by Peter, deserted by his disciples, Tried in a kangaroo court, whipped all night long. They slapped him. They mocked him. They abused him. They hung him on a cross. And there he died. Then they took him out and buried him. And he suffered all of that for you and for me. So I'm going to tell you, like Paul was telling the Corinthians, how dare we treat communion like it's some routine ritual. Right. It's a celebration. Yeah. And we ought to come ready yeah. to celebrate. Yeah. We ought to come in on the first Sunday yeah. glad yeah. to be in the house yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. And if you can't get here, you ought to still be celebrating yeah. communion yeah. wherever you are. Yeah. And you don't have to wait till just the first Sunday. Yeah. Anytime you get ready, can get you some juice, and you can get you some bread, and you can offer it up to God and say, God, I remember what you did for me. If you keep reading this particular passage or this particular chapter, you'll find that in verses 27 and 30, Paul discusses the seriousness of taking communion lightly. He says, you know, you don't, and that what they were doing, they would have a fellowship meal. And then after the fellowship meal, they would have the communion service or event. Well, there were those who would come hungry. They had food at their house, but they come hungry. But then these were those who had. You know, we got the have and the have nots. These were those that had. Had a whole lot of food at their house. But they come to the meeting place. Eat like they ain't had nothing in 10 years. Then the poor people come in and they wouldn't have anything to eat. So Paul is asking, how dare you come to this feast? How dare you come to this celebration and be greedy, be selfish? But that's how we do. Because some of us, we have the blessings of God. And, and, and Dick talked about it in the prayer. We got everything that God can give us. And we're selfish with it. We hold on to it. Don't want to share what God has given us. But if you don't give it out, ain't nothing else coming in. Ain't nothing getting in a cold head. You got to open up your head. When you open it up, it goes out and God brings some more in. having discord with people and you come in and, and you take communion he says if you judge yourself you don't have to worry about nobody else judging you and you cannot tell me cause see I, 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 I declare and decree that I am a child of God and I know that the spirit of God lives on the inside and because he does when I would do evil, yeah. when I would do good, evil is always present. Yeah. But because the Holy Spirit is present, wow. he lets me know when I'm about to do something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can't do it wrong and then say, oh, I didn't know that. Mm. You did know it was wrong because the Holy Spirit is inside of you. What kind of God would we have that would 
<laughs> what kind of God do we yeah. serve? Do we love? Yeah. Who would purposely yeah. let us do something wrong yeah. and then condemn us for doing yeah. that wrong yeah. that he told us not to do? Yeah. 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 The devil, the devil is. <laughs> The devil didn't tell that lie. No. You knew it was wrong because God had already told you it was wrong. You had this 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 funny feeling before you did. There was no mm, there was no satisfaction. Boy, wait, oh, hold on. No, there was satisfaction. That's why we did it. Because we were satisfying the flesh. But when the spirit says Stop! And like so many of them get dry, you just blow right past that stop sign. And then you look up and say, oh, I didn't know that was a stop sign. I'm just trying to tell you that communion is speaking to you today. Yeah. And he's telling you to quit pretending like you don't know that that sin is present in your life because yeah. you know that it's yeah. present. Yeah. But this is speak communion. Mm -hmm. It would be better, or not better. It would be it would be the same if you came in and you knew you you were you had unrepentant unrepentant things in your life, right? Mm -hmm. You've got some unforgiveness. Well, You've got some evil thoughts. Mm -hmm. You've got some. Uh, some selfishness. You got, you know, you got some of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you've not asked God to forgive you of that. And so you say, well, I've got, I have, I've got unconfessed sins. So I'm mm -hmm. not going to take communion. It's just as bad if you sit here with unconfessed sins and not take communion mm -hmm. as if you were to take communion with your unconfessed sins. Mm -hmm. You get it? Because you know you got unconfessed yeah. sins, well. do not dishonor what God has done. Yeah. He bled, he died, yeah. he suffered yeah. for all of us. Yeah. And for you to say, oh, I can't take communion because mm -hmm. I, I, I got drunk last night, or I was in uh, fornication last night, or I was in adultery last night, or I just told a lie, or... It don't matter what you did if you confess your sins, God is just to forgive you of your sins. And when you confess it, he forgives it. He separates as far as the east is from the west, and it never comes up again. So how dare you sit in here, don't take communion because of something you did that you can get forgiveness for. Communion is speaking to us today. Get it right. Get it right with God. Because no sin enters into heaven. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We don't want to dishonor God. We don't want to make light of anything that he's done. And as the Lord has given it to me, as I have received it, I'm going to give it to you. It might be tight, but it's going to be right. It might hurt somebody's feelings, but I got to speak what thus saith the Lord. And I know what she fusses. I'm, I'm just telling you what the word says. And if, if he does not discipline us, if he does not chastise us, then we are not his children. And I would rather for us to know it now than go out and die and not know it. Amen? Amen. says when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which was given for you. King James says, which was broken for you, and, and I, I, I have an issue with the way that they put that in there because it tells me, but now I understand. I had an issue, but see, I had to get it right. I had an issue because my, this is my body which was broken for you. It wasn't the body of Jesus that was broken. Because remember it says that not a bone in his body was broken. You remember when the, they were hanging on the cross, thief on the right, thief on the left, Jesus in the middle. And in order to, to hasten or to, to hurry up the death, because tomorrow was Passover and it was getting late and they wanted to get out of there so they were going to break their bones so that they would die quick. Mm -hmm. They broke the one on the right, they broke the one on 
the leper when they got to Jesus, he was already dead. Because God had made, had seen fit that not a bone in his body be broken. Psalms talked about not none of his bones will be broken. It was prophesied that his bones would not be broken. So they could not break his leg because he was already dead. Anybody says, well, he didn't really die. The devil is a lie. He did die because the soldier who was the enemy said he already did. Then he stuck his spear in the side and blood and water came out. He was already dead. He died for a shot. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
mixed with the blood of Jesus. What? Hallelujah. Can wash away my sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that was when I mixed, you know, <laughs> that, 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 that same thing that God wrote the Ten Commandments with. He takes that same thing and mixes up the blood of Jesus and all of what we go through. And all of life's trouble bringing. He mixes it up and with, and with the thing of God, he mixes up the blood of Jesus. So tell me what's better. What I'm going through or the blood of Jesus. I heard Paul say, this is what a life is. To what the glory of God is going to shine on us. Yeah. 
was who were they? When John looked and he saw a number that no man could and he said, Who were they? These are the ones who washed their blood in the washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. These are the ones who came up through trials and tribulations. These are the ones who had turned their back when times got hard. The mother days. They just rise. But the devil has whipped up to try and get you to, to, to leave God. Because God never leaves us. We are not going to ever leave him. Loyal to God. I would say, for God I live and for God I die. But some real horrific comments. Mm. Like the young lady with the collarbone when they point the gun and say, if you say you love Jesus one more time, I'm gonna shoot you, shoot me. Cause I love Jesus. Cause when I leave this world, I got another bill. Not made with heaven. To live is to die is to gain. I can I don't care what you do with this body. Tracy, you can take this body, you can bury it, you can burn it, you can ship it. I don't care what you do with the body. I'm going to there with God. Because communion tells me that in me there's a longing. And I, I have, you know, a longing to be with my Savior. A longing to, to be able to say, when I see Jesus, yeah. all I want to say is amen. Yeah. You know, y'all can go look for, for this one and that one. And, and, you know, I ain't trying to be funny. But you can go look for mom and dad and brother and sister and aunt and uncle. You can go look for all of them. But all I want to do is see Jesus. I want to see the one that died for me. I want to see the one with the nail scarred hand. I want to see the one that they stretched him high and hung him wide. There's a longing in every believer. A longing. Does somebody know what it means to be homesick? Yeah. 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 There is a part of a believer that is homesick. Because this world is not our home. There is Communion tells me that because the Spirit of God lives on the inside, when Jesus comes back, he's looking for that Spirit. So there's a longing that we have to be with the Lord. Because mm. he said, oh, in John 14, I'm going to prepare a place. That where I am, there you will be also. And for all of you who need to, who need to still believe that he went to heaven to fix up a place for you, that's, that's okay. You keep, we keep believing that. But God has revealed that when Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place, he was going to Calvary. Because it was at Calvary that the place was yeah, prepared for yeah, us. Yeah. It was at Calvary that his blood was shed. Amen. The same blood that he then took before the Father and put on the mercy seat in heaven. The same blood that he went into the holies of holies well. and put and spread it so that our sins would be atoned. Amen. I know he's done. He went to prepare a place for me. And wherever he is, that's where I'm going to be. The word says wherever I am, then you will be. Yeah. A believer will be wherever Jesus yeah. is. I told you it could be in Timbuktu. Yeah. It could be in Kalamazoo. Yeah. It don't matter. Wherever yeah. Jesus is, is where we're going to be. Because he says I came to give you life. Communion tells me. I hear communion say I came to give you life. And to give it to you more abundantly. John 10 St. John 10 chapter talks about him being the good shepherd. 
and the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And so because he gave his life for the sheep, we are his sheep. Then he has prepared a place for us to stay with him. He died that we might live. I hear communion say, love. I hear communion say, stay loyal. I hear, hear communion say, be, 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 be faithful. I hear communion say, long to come to, to where I am. I hear communion say, you have life. Not just here, but you have eternal life. So I thank God for, for communion speaking. Thank you, and not just on the first Sunday, but every time I pick up the word and yeah, read the word yeah, of God, yeah, yeah. communion speaks, because what is communion? <laughs> it says a sharing or exchanging yeah. of intimate thoughts and feelings, mm. especially the exchange on a spiritual level. Well, mm. So I can commune with God not just on the first Sunday, but I can commune with God over in the midnight hour. Early in the morning, I can commune with God. Early in the afternoon, 12 noon, I can commune with God. Oh, you can be around me and I can still commune with God. I can share with him my intimate feelings. I can get personal with him. I can get naked before him. And I ain't talking about any clothes. I'm talking about taking off all of this house yeah. yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, how you doing? Oh, praise the Lord, I'm doing fine. And inside, you got the burden. Oh. You got the bus oh. wide open. Oh. You can let him know, God, I don't understand what's going on inside of yeah. me. But I know you do. Oh. And I trust you to help me out. And I know, man, sometimes it's hard for you to think about getting intimate with another man, but you need to see this man as your father, as your heavenly father, somebody that knows you inside out anyway. I thank God that he has given us communion as often as you do this. Remember me. As often as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup. As often as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Because the word is the living water. As often as you do it, remember what he did. How he sacrificed. How he died for us. Remember that. And then praise his name. Yeah. Give him glory. Yeah. Hallelujah, God. Yeah. Thank you for dying for me, God. You did what I couldn't do for myself. You paid my sin debt. God, I couldn't do it myself. Because I was full of sin. No human on earth could do it. But God said, if I, Jesus told God, told the Father, make me a body, and I don't got it now. Because only a sinless sacrifice. Would answer justice is called. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A human got us into this mess. It took a human to get us out of yeah. this mess. But a human with no sin. Yeah. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. So thank God, I thank you for speaking to us today. And I pray, yeah. it is my prayer that we never, we never come in here to take communion the same anymore. Amen. That we get rid of that routine, that whole home, that, oh, it's the first Sunday, we're going to do communion. No, it's the first Sunday, we're going to have communion. Yeah. Thank you. Get excited about it. Because yeah. it stands for what Jesus yeah. and Jesus alone did for all of us. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.
not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is not too late. Because while the blood runs warm in your veins, the word says, <laughs> in first Isaiah, it said, come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them whiter than snow. Harden not your heart the day that you hear the word of the Lord. He has come to proclaim his love for you. By accepting him as your Savior, you proclaim your love back to him. Because the only way that you can love yourself and anybody else, wow. you got to receive the love of God. Yeah. For those who have not received the love of God, the gift of salvation. Because that's what communion is all about. It's about the gift of salvation. If you've not received that, then today is your day. This is your hour to come out of darkness into his marvelous light. Today is your day to become a child of the Most High God. Don't take no flipping, don't take no falling at the mouth, don't have to cut no cockwheels, don't have to slide for all you do is just come to Jesus, just as you are. Wherever you are, if you're here, if you're on social media, just let God know right now, Lord, I need you in my life and I accept you as my Savior. For reconciliation, rededication, we invite you to, to, to come to Jesus right now. And let him know, God, I thought that I, I had it figured out, but I found out that I really don't know anything. Because I can't do anything without you. And I need you to restore the joy of my salvation. Won't you reconcile to him now? And because we're in person now, someone, if there's anyone who desires membership in Emmanuel Moore Missionary Baptist Church, whether by way of social media, whether you're in person, we invite you to just to make it known that you wish because God has answered your prayer. Remember, you prayed and asked God, is this where you need to be? And God has said yes. Then the doors of the church are open. Come as a candidate for baptism, Christian experience by ladder. Won't you follow Jesus today wherever he leads you? And I'm here to tell you, he will not lead you wrong. Salvation, rededication, church membership. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, glory, majesty, and honor be unto you. We exalt you today, God, and we thank you. We thank you for loving us so much that you died for us. We thank you for loving us so much that you will not leave us. You will not forsake us. It doesn't matter what we come and what we might bring ourselves into. We heard on last Sunday that some things are self-inflicted, God. Some things are at the hand of, of, of our enemy. But God, whatever it is, you won't leave us. You'll always be there with us. And for that, we tell you thank you. Oh, God, we praise you right now. And perhaps from the first prayer to this prayer, maybe I've had some thoughts that I should not have had, God. I ask you to please forgive me, God. Maybe I made a face that I shouldn't have made, God. I ask you to forgive me right now. God, maybe I physically did something that I wasn't supposed to do. And I knew I shouldn't have done it, but God, I'm still asking you to forgive me. And because you love me the way that you do, I thank you for your forgiveness. God, I thank you for every home that's represented. I thank you for every family that's represented. God, I thank you for, for just knowing our ins and outs. 
You know what we have need of even before we ask you. And we're grateful that you're able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we may ask or think according to the power that worketh from within us. Oh God, we thank you for, for those experiences that we will have this week. So we would rather not have. But God, because you're with us, it's going to be all right. God, I thank you for blessing the bereaved families right now. Blessing those who are still suffering with COVID, God. Blessing those who are homeless. Those who are going through the storms, the physical storms, God. Bless them, Lord. Keep them safe. Those who lost loved ones in the storm, God, we lift them up to you that you might comfort and strengthen them, Lord. So much is going on, God. We pray for our government, God. Pray for our politicians, God. Those who are so focused on themselves, can't think about anybody else. God, touch their hearts and touch their minds. Bless our first responders, God. Bless our military, God. Those who have been dispatched over across the sea, God. Keep them safe, Lord. We lift up all of the circumstances and situations in this world to you. For it does belong to you. And everything that you allow to happen by faith, we know that it will work out for our good. So we bless your name for every, for every need right now. Thank you for supplying it. For every healing, thank you, oh God, that by your stripes, it's already ours. We thank you for peace. We thank you for strength. We thank you, oh God, for just being with us. And thank you for the ability, God, to commune with you whenever we want to. Thank you for tearing down the curtain that allows us to come to you whenever we want to. Not just when we need to, but when we want to, God. Thank you, God, for being, for being our, our God. And allowing us to be your children. We praise you and we bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
for Rosa God who shall begin a journey this week. A journey in a, that she would rather not go through God, but like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. If it be your will that she drinks from this cup, we know that you are already taking care of the situation, God. So God, we thank you for the healing that's already been, already been asked for, God. We thank you for the healing, God, that's already been performed. And God, we are grateful that the same comfort that you've given us, we give unto Rosa right now. The same strength that you've given unto us, we give unto Rosa right now. The same peace that you've given unto us, we give unto Rosa right now. And God, we ask that you continue to bless this man of God, that you place as priest over the home. Strengthen him, God. God, help him. Hold him up, God, that he might hold her up. God, you said, how can two walk together except they agree? We thank you for the two walking together and agreeing that you love them dearly, God. So, God, we thank you. And we await to hear the awesome testimony. That never did she doubt God. Never did she fear. Because she knew that God had her. God, we know that you got her. And again today, God, through perseverance in the spirit, through prayer, we put her in your hands, God. We don't trust her with anybody else. We put her in your hands. So thank you for taking her through the valley, bringing her back out to the mountain top where she will continue to give you praises, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Reverend God, I have the honor to come before you, Lord, once again, God. Lord, just saying thank you, God. Lord, we thank you because you are God, and beside you, Lord, there is none other. God, we thank you that you sent your son of Jesus to Christ to tell us that he died for our sins, God. And that, Lord, when he died on that cross, God, but he raised up, he was raised up in three days, God. And the most important thing was all power in his hands, God. So we are, Lord, we are so glad and so happy to know that he has all all power in his hands, and there's nothing too hard for him, God. Lord, that he can fix any situation, God. So, Lord, we just thank you for Rosa, God. We thank you for Eric, God, right now that, Lord, this is the vessel that you have chosen that's going to get glory, God. This is the vessel that you have chosen to use to get your glory, God. So, Lord, we know that after it's all said and done, God, Rosa's going to going to be able to tell somebody. Yeah. She's going to shout it from the mountaintop. Yeah. Look yeah. and see what the Lord has done. Yeah. But Lord, why she's going through, God. Why she's going through, God. Lord, give her the strength to make it through, God. Remind her, God, that, Lord, you wouldn't have gave it to her, God, if you didn't think she could handle it, God. And because you gave it to her, Lord, let her know, Lord, that it's not too hard for her, Lord. You would have put more than she can bear, Lord. So remind her that this load she can carry, God. Because you are carrying her, God. So even before it starts, God. We know tomorrow starts it off, God. But tomorrow it might start it off, but we're starting that celebration right now, God. We're not going to wait for it to be over, God. We're right now, God. We are thanking you, God. For the healing right now, God. Not waiting for the doctor to say it's all done. We are celebrating right now. Continue to strengthen this man, God, that is standing by our side, God. Lord, we thank you for this man. We thank you, Lord, for being the head of his house, God. Thank you, Lord, that he prays with her, God. Thank you that he loves her like he loves her, God. Thank you that he encouraging her, Lord. And let her know when you're weak, I'm going to be right there to lift you up, baby. We're in this thing together. But God is going to get the glory. Yeah. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your man you the more your missionary back to church, God. God. That God directed yeah. her this way, God. Yeah. Because he, yeah. the Lord knew that she was going to need yeah. some help. Yeah. The Lord knew she was going to need somebody yeah. to go to church, God. Yeah. Yeah. She was going to need somebody that could put yeah. the word in her, God. Yeah. And let her know you, that this too shall pass, God. So we thank you, God. We thank you for this couple that you have given us, God. Yeah. Through them, 
You're going to get your glory. Yeah. We love you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name, we do pray and believe. Amen. Amen.
read Psalm 111, the first psalm that they sang when they were, after they had celebrated in the upper room. The word of God. Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great. Studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious. And his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them to the heritage of the nation. Yeah. Verses 1 through 6 of Psalm 111. Let us pray. Our Father God, which are in heaven, we come at this particular time saying thank you. In Jesus' name, God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for what our ears have heard this morning, Lord God. We thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. What must I say now, God, except for thank you? Thank you, God. Let each man and woman born and girl examine themselves. Pray, God, that we do not eat nor drink their nature to our souls, nor do our bodies any harm. God, I say again, thank you. God, by the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, God, by the Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Now, hear my prayer. Hear my prayer. And grant it unto us. In Jesus' name I pray. In the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For our children, for Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And we're grateful that God gives them a place in communion as well. The body, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is given for each of us, go now and divide among us that we might commune with each other and more importantly with God Almighty. Choir.
and he stayed with them 40 some days. But he says, even now, after I leave you, I will not leave you comfortless. I'm going to ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit that he might lead and guide you into all truth and righteousness. The Holy Spirit came, and we are now sealed until the day of redemption. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's reason for celebration, y'all. Amen. 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 Reason for celebration. To thank God for being who he is, loving us enough that he come back for us. Amen. Quiet. As we prepare to leave this place, but never the presence of God, I pray that you will have an awesome week in the Lord. That you will remember this day commemorates the day that he instituted the community. That whenever, whenever you you focus on God and what he's done for you, you're having communion with him. Amen? Amen. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest with you, may it abide with you, may it keep you forevermore. In the name of Jesus, choir.